welcome to the Financial Advisors Advisor, the podcast offering guidance and advice on all things concerning financial advisors, RIAs, and the practitioners. Brought to you by Elite Consulting Partners, it's the go-to podcast for any financial advisor in the wealth management business. Learn more and subscribe today at EliteConsultingPartners.com slash podcast. And now, here's your host, Frank LaRosa. Hey, everybody. This is Frank LaRosa, the CEO of Elite Consulting Partners, and I am the Financial Advisors Advisor. And as usual, I'm here with my COO, Dale Dempsey. Spreading happiness and good vibes. Getting ready to wrap up another uh, long, long day. We worked a ton this week. Dare I say too busy, but you know, my wife would say too busy. 14-hour days is a little bit rough, but uh, that's okay. Helping a lot of folks, and it feels good. Yeah, it feels good. Totally. It's one of those things where uh, we're trying to help them you know, after they're done working, after they're done working with their clients. And so if it means that we're taking calls at 8 o'clock at night, that's what we got to do, right? Yes. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, if this is your first time to our podcast, thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Welcome to our conversation. We certainly hope you enjoy it. I mean, if you do enjoy it, we would suggest going back and listening to uh, many of our other podcasts. Uh, they are all really informative. We try to keep these shows 15, 20 minutes tops. We want you to be listening to these these shows on the way to work, on the, on the way home from work, on the way to the gym, at getting exercise, going on a walk. The best times for you to really soak in what we have to say, take the information back to your office, and really implement the simple things that we try to get across to everybody. Uh, so we try to have, it's almost like taking things in small bites. You know, Sometimes you're going you're gonna to enjoy the meal better. So that's our goal. If you've already been listening, thank you very much. We appreciate all the all the great feedback we're getting. Don't forget to like us on iTunes. Write down our great review. I, I get great reviews via email and at frank at eliteconsultingpartners.com. Also uh, on Instagram, franklarosa.elite. Some great comments. I would ask you to put those same comments, post those same comments on, uh, on iTunes. It'd be awesome. Really appreciated. And even more so, share with your buddies, share with your friends. If you know somebody that topics that we covered are more relevant to them, just share it. If there's topics that you want to hear more about, let us know and we'll cover them. So with that said, today we wanted to really talk about a topic that actually Dale had a great conversation with a, with a client today. And so we wanted to, we thought, man, this would be a great idea to just talk about this today. Um, that is the the home office visit, the VIP trip, as some people call it. The sort of the day, not a day in the life, but you know, you're an advisor if you're listening to this and you're looking to make a move. Most likely, the firms are trying to get you to get on a plane, fly out to their home office, and uh, you know, sort of do the the whole dog and pony show. And that's how people talk about, oh, it's a dog and pony show, and and they sort of discount the the value on it. But what we what we want to talk about today was really how important it really is. And because of that, we're actually going to break down the series uh, into two different podcasts, one from the advisor's point of view and how important it is and the things that you all need to be thinking about. Then the second one that we'll cover is really from the firm's point of view and the types of things that a firm should be thinking about and considering when asking an advisor to spend their time, spend a day or two out of the office visiting, um, you know, visiting their, their home office. I've been on both sides of that and I can tell you and, and been with clients on VIP trips and um, I've seen it done really, really well and I've seen it done not so well. Today, we wanted to just really focus on the home office visit from, from the advisor's perspective and the things that you know, the sort of the obvious things that they should be focused on while they're on this trip. And then some of the not so obvious things. And before you sort of go to a trip, you know, go on a trip, you know, preparation is really important. All right. You, you might know the manager or the person that's recruiting you at the firm and you have great conversations over the phone and everything's clicking, maybe lunches and a couple of different things there. But once you have an opportunity to Really spend some time at a home office where you know you're going to meet with a bunch of different people 
It's going to be like a sort of fire hydrant kind of day. It's really important that you're prepared ahead of time. Um, you know, going with a notebook ready to take notes is not really the right way to do it because you're going to get inundated with information. You're going to, you're going to start conversations and you're really just going to, you're going to miss a lot of things. And, and Dale, you, Dale, maybe you can just talk a little bit about your conversation today because it's, I heard over the phone the conversation was really good and it made made her feel more comfortable, secure about going to the trip. What what are the kinds of things that you were talking to with her about in terms of being prepared? First of all, we were we were really talking about just broad based. You know, what what do we need to do to get prepared about what, for for a home office visit? And my suggestion was, you know, let's make this tailored to you and your practice because they're they're going to just if you don't say anything they're going to try and throw their standard dog and pony show at you yeah right well they're going to they're going to give you the their best and, and their brightest they're going to give you the people that put on the best presentations it's like an interview right everybody could look great in an interview but it's not necessarily relevant absolutely right and so you won't take you won't have the best experience necessarily so without getting into their practice Really what I think when I'm going to a home office visit, all the stuff I want to see that I talk about frequently is, is the technology. What does it look like when if I'm an advisor and I log in to a workstation, show me the trading platform, show me the financial planning stuff. But what I call like the day in the life, right? What does it look like when I walk in the office, turn my computer on, yep. and what does that look like? New account forms, all that sort of stuff. But my comment to them, so still going back to this, is let's, when we made a list of all the most important areas of the practice and really started talking about it and, and went from 10 things down to five areas that they wanted to focus on. And I made some suggestions around stuff they hadn't really thought about doing like maybe specialty areas at that specific firm. Right. Well, look, they're going to, they're going to have you talk to, you know, the, the general areas that are important for you to see are marketing, sort of the, you know, the marketing, what is that going to look like? Technology, like you're talking about, seeing the systems. We suggest sort of the day in the life, to see the actual system, right? Ask them to see it live, not some screenshot. Um, what does it look like? Where do I, you know, click some buttons, mess around with it, see if it's user-friendly. Financial planning, what does that software look like? Who are the people that you're going to be working with? Do they have an advanced planning team? Those kinds of things. If you do advanced planning, you're probably going to want to meet some of the people that are you're going to be working with on a sort of mo- monthly basis. So you want to meet them, meet those people. Well, wait, we, we got off. Hold on. We got off topic here for a second. To get prepared, my suggestion was a product list. And I think you can take that, you know, obviously across all sorts of areas like if you're doing advanced planning, you're going to want to have, you want to flush out all that stuff before you get there. So they know your practice more beyond preliminary paperwork. You're going to want to have questions answered by, by specialists, by experts in that department. And that's, that's the whole reason of sending the firm information ahead of time so that you can talk about it face to face. If there's an issue, especially if there's an issue. Yeah. If you have annuities, you want to send your annuity product list, right? So they might have the the carriers that you work with, but the products with, with, within that that carrier's product line may be different. Check that, right? QCIPs, UITs, those types of things with a local manager, the guy that you're going to be working with all the time or, or a woman you're going to be working with all the time may say, yeah, we carry all that stuff, right? But maybe those QCIPs aren't on their list. And so while you're at the meeting, it would certainly be helpful if UIT investing was, you know, 10% of your business, wouldn't it be awesome if they had somebody from the UIT desk come meet with you and walk you through those things? This is your time, your time to get your questions answered, your detailed questions answered, because the people with the answers are going to be right down the hall. So go get those people, right? If you have questions about managed accounts and there's a manager that's not on the platform. Well, what is it going to take to get that manager on the platform? You want to talk to people in the managed account department, right? You want to talk about financial planning, bring those people in. Is there a way to move over your planning, your all your plans? All the all the leaders. Right. So actually 
leadership is probably one of the well we're getting to that yep. right so in addition to the the financial planning people in those, in those areas including the trading desks so i take trading oh, desks yeah. sort of old school like trading desks if you're doing fixed income whether you want to meet with the people from fixed income you know usually what what they'll do folks is they'll bring you into like a nice conference room they'll rotate the people through your conference room and meet with you for 30 40 minutes um, but certain areas I would suggest that you suggest you go see them. Go see the trading desk. Go see how they're structured. Where are the are your contacts, your liaisons relative to the actual traders? Are they sitting on the same desks and are they in pods? St stuff will come out. Oh, guess what? Our trading desk is actually outsourced. Oh, right. I didn't know that. Right. Interesting. Right. Or there's three people on the on the trading desk, right? That cover 800 advisors. You want to talk about those things. The senior leadership, and again, these are the obvious areas that you're going to want to talk about. And one of the obvious other obvious ones is senior leadership. Um, and we're not really talking about senior leadership from a department head scenario. Right? You want to see those people. But in actuality, and if you're a department head leader, don't take offense to this, they're not that important. People that are important in the departments are the ones that are going to answer the phone when you call or your assistant calls to solve a problem. Those are the people that you want to talk to. But when you talk about senior leadership, I'm talking about senior leadership, president, CEO, chief operating officer, chief administrative officer, those CFO, right? The C-suite, call them the C-suite folks. You want to get a sense of culture from them, right? Because, you know, culture starts at the top. Are they spending, when they come in and you've spent your entire day or a lot of times two days traveling out there how much time are they giving you when you're there yeah i get they have a lot of stuff to do right but you've taken an entire day or day and a half out of your life to go talk to this firm to consider spending the rest of your life there rest of your professional life there so are they giving you the courtesy or are they giving you some tertiary you know i'll come in i'll say hello how you doing 20 minutes they didn't even look at your bio when you before they they walked in the door uh, they don't know who you are. They don't know what your main concerns are um, or the flip side of that. And I've, and again, I've seen both where they read your bio. They know you have two kids and they know where they go to college and they know you've been married for 20 years. And, you know, because the, the manager, whoever prepared you for your trip, took diligent notes and provided those notes to senior leadership who actually read the notes before they walked in the door. And I've seen both sides of it, and it's embarrassing because it's obvious when the senior leadership walks in and doesn't know. Yeah, they know the guy's name, but they don't even know, like, what firm are you at? I mean, I actually was at an HOV, and it was with my with our client, and they thought I was the advisor. And and they're talking to him like, no, no. Well, you are. He's, well, I'm, well, the, you're advisor, not. I'm right. the financial <laughs> advisor's advisor. Ba -da -bum. That's a good one. But, you know, they should have known, right? Everybody has a website. Everybody's face is on their website. They, they should have known. It was a little bit awkward, you know, at times. But well, hold on. They, they make an interesting point here. Some firms also have a separate client HOV, which you should do as well. But I think it ties into what you're saying. If they don't know you as the advisor and they're not prepared for that, what's going to happen if you bring one of your high net worth yeah. clients around? Yeah. Well, I, look, I tell everybody that it, this is a good, in, and which is why it's important for you to do this. It's a good indication of what it's going to be like if you bring a client through that same process. It's a little bit different because they're a client, and so you're meeting with internal people. But it is really important. Some of the less obvious stuff, right? So you get it, senior leadership, president comes in. Is he spending time with you? Are you going down the night before and having dinner with the president of the firm? or somebody at least in a senior leadership role that is recognizing you're coming down. Some of the less obvious things, and I sometimes I get made fun of because I'm a little bit, uh, I don't know. I you're just, a stickler I, I, for the details. A little bit of stickler for the details. Are they picking you up at the airport? Or are they making you get your own Uber? What is that like? How professional was setting up the travel arrangements? Did they tell you to set up the travel arrangements? Or is someone calling you from their travel department to do that? Actually, I think we did one where there was there was no arrangements at the airport, and we right they, or they had them. Maybe no, they had them, 
And well, then, no, we did the one didn't, when didn't we showed really... up at the airport. It was never discussed what the travel arrangements were, and we ended up getting our own Uber, which is, hey, I'm not saying that that's, in today's day and age, that, that's very convenient, right? But it wasn't even talked about. And, and luckily, we were with the advisor, and we were able to sort of solve that problem quickly. But then the other things are when you go there, signing in, checking in, what's that experience like? Lunch. I know this is a small thing, but how is breakfast or lunch taken care of? You remember a couple of years ago, I brought a large producer to uh, two different home office visits, which we also recommend. Don't just go to the to one. If you've gone through a due diligence process and you've narrowed your search down to two or three, go to at least two of the three, unless there's sort of sort of a tie and you like all three of them then we recommend going to all three. I mean, the team we just moved recently in Chicago, we, I went to four of them. And you did them in proximity or like close close in, in terms of the, the Tiny, date range? Yeah, yeah we, we right. did like, with like two weeks apart each so that they had the experiences fresh in their mind. And although they, they ended up going to the firm initially that they thought they were going to go to, they were able to really flush out why that was the right choice. And so it's, it was really important. But some firms, and, and again, we went to a firm, we left one firm, it was lunch was great, it was taken care of, it was the details about how they served us lunch, we were taken care of, it was a level of appreciation that we were giving up our time to be there. Get on a plane, we go literally to fly to another state, to go to the second home office visit, we had to get our own car. We like we had to get our own Uber, right? We're there in the morning. We're having lunch. Is was a like a boxed lunch, like a boxed lunch with a wrap and a bag of chips, and um, like styrofoam cups for water, like just a pitcher of water and styrofoam cups. Like oh shoot, we forgot to get water. Go get some water down the hall, right? Do you think that's what literally, literally what what happened, or? I don't know, but it was, it, I mean, they knew we were coming. So, and the issue was, again, it's not like being stuck up or whatever, but this particular advisor had uber wealthy clients. Yeah, know, know your client, right? Know right. your advisor client. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so an advisor that has uber wealthy clients has a certain expectation level. And he was completely taken back with the fact that he does $7 million in production and that's that's how much respect or lack of respect they were showing in t- paying, t- paying attention to the details. I ended up telling the CEO that when when they left. And that's one of the topics we're actually going to talk about next week when we look at it from, from the firm's point of view. The right, other but, things it's, that, but it's important if it's, it's not obvious to you. It's, it's, it's hugely important. Yeah. The other things that I've picked up on and that I want everybody to pay attention to when they do these things because they're not obvious – when you're walking through the halls, when you're in the lobby, look around at the people that are there. Because the people that are they're going to march through your little conference room for their 30 minutes are on their best behavior. They're the nicest people, and you're the best. They're on their best behavior. It's like an interview, right? They're going to they only have to be really good for about 30 minutes. But when you're there and they don't know who you are, right? You're just some other person in their in the lobby. Look at the interaction from employee to employee. How are everybody treating everybody? Are they laughing? Are they smiling with each other? Or is it like, hmm, they're walking around, you know, with sort of dull faces, not really thrilled to be there. That's a cultural thing. You can deduce rather quickly if there's internal conflicts, if the general culture is on the downswing. And I got maybe, maybe been on so many now that yeah look we it, were we were we were on a trip and well we were on it as a personal personal trip I mean, not a personal trip but it was us going on a visit we were looking for an update from the firm and we went spent about a half a day there oh and okay, we're sitting right. in the we're sitting in the uh, cafeteria which is a nice cafeteria the food was awesome because i wanted to see interaction i wanted to see what everyone was was about right lo and behold the chairman of the firm walked in like anybody else that was there, picked up his tray and got his food and just sat down with a bunch of IT guys. Like he was that guy, like in high school when you, you know, you got your food and you didn't really know where to sit and no one was making eye contact because they weren't sure what to think. 
he was like looking for a place to sit down. And so he just sat down at the table next to us, which was a bunch of IT guys. And he, he didn't sit down with us probably because we didn't have a seat available. Well, we we didn't have a seat available. Only, there was four of us at the table. But to me, that said a lot Oh yeah, about the firm. Like, wow, that's that's not class, but here's the chairman. Probably, you know, there are some firms where, you know, the chairman is on some special floor that has a special kitchen and, um, you know, special foods brought in. And um, it's just a cultural thing. So I, I'm ranting yeah. on because I, I see these are the types of things everybody can talk about. They have a good managed platform. Everyone can talk about they have a good fixing of the apartment and they have technology and they have all these different things. And it's true. They, they all have those things and some of it is better, a little bit better than others. But it's the subtle things that you pick up when you go to one of these meetings that they can't plan. You can't plan on what's it going to be like when you're walking through the halls and they're going through stuff. And those are the things I want you to pick up on. Um, and then the, the last thing I, want, I wanted to just touch on, and the reason why we we really suggest our clients go to home office visits is because we want the firm to want you. Right. When we get into the negotiation, sort of the art of the deal, and we no pun intended or Trump intended, I'm just talking about the art of the deal. When we start talking to the firm about getting our clients as much money as possible, and again, that means something different to everybody, but getting the best deal possible, it always helps if the firm that we're working with really wants our client. And so we talk to our clients about the fact that it's an interview both ways. And so when they're, when you're meeting with the president of the firm who's going to sign off on the deal that we negotiate, we want the president of that firm to remember who you are, not just some name on a piece of paper that does you know a million and a half dollars and you know two hundred million dollars in assets, right? We want them to know, oh, this was Jill Jones. I remember her. She was awesome. She was so funny. She was great. She really loved her clients. She was classy. Blah 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 blah. We want her at our firm. That helps us just get a little bit extra. Maybe it's marketing money. Maybe it's a higher payout. Maybe it's more transition dollars. Maybe it's lower hurdles. There's all sorts of levers that we can pull. And so it's really important to remember why you're going there. And I, I've had, on the flip side, I had a $10 million client, uh, candidly, go to uh, a VIP trip from Raymond James. And after they left the firm called and passed on him because he was a jackass and it wasn't necessary to be pompous and all this just because you were doing $10 million. And so I tried to explain it to him, but he didn't listen. This was several years ago. So we're trying to tell you that now that the interview goes both ways and you need to be paying attention to all the things that are going to be important and the subtle things that they can't plan on. Because those are the kind, those are the things that are going to be long lasting. If you go to a firm where people walk through the halls and they're miserable, probably not going to be great for you to be at that firm because when you answer the phone, when the, when you call there and someone answers the phone, they're probably not going to be that happy, and it's going to make it a little bit harder for you and your support staff to get stuff done. So, it's really important to do. Uh, we want you to want you to make sure that you understand. Um, it's just it's worth the trip. If you're offered, if you're serious about making a move to a particular firm and they offer to put you on a plane to go wherever it is, uh, you owe it to yourself, to your family, to your clients, right? Like Dal said, bring that list. Make sure you're covering all the little details, client account fees, all that. You owe it to your clients to really take a deep dive and um, look under the hood. So with that said, uh, Dale, got anything else? Appreciate it. Uh, just last thing, maybe you want to bring somebody who's not an advisor with you. In a lot of cases, uh, maybe a spouse or something, just to get another perspective. Yeah, that's a great point. Second set of ears. Second set of ears, another set of eyes. Uh, again, fire hydrant, you're going to miss some things. Have someone there to take notes. Could be you know, a trusted sales assistant, a partner, uh, but great point. Definitely a great point. Hey, guys, thanks very much. We appreciate it spending the time. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe. Go to iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to uh, your, your, your podcasts. And uh, we look forward to uh, talking to you next week. Thanks a lot. Love, everybody. See ya.
You've been listening to the Financial Advisors Advisor Podcast, brought to you by Elite Consulting Partners, the leading experts in advisor transitions, succession planning, and broker-dealer and RIA M&A consulting. If you're looking for strategic advice or solutions on any of those topics within the financial services industry, or you just want to subscribe to the podcast, head on over to EliteConsultingPartners.com. 